Hi everyone, uh, Nikolai back with you here again in beautiful Miami, Florida at the Trade Tech FX conference. I'm here with Michael Kogler, who's uh, managing principal at... You pronounced that right, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who's uh, managing principal at Market Alpha Advisors. Uh, Michael, welcome. Thank you, nice to be here. Uh, so I know it's, well it's day two, uh, it's still early in the day, but I'm sure you've already talked to folks and uh, industry leaders that are here. Kind of, uh, what's your impression of the event? kind of what are you hearing what are you seeing well this this is a great event I've been attending this for many years I've been a participant for many years yesterday I was chairperson for innovation day and I love this conference because I, I get to see all the latest and greatest technologies that a wide range of firms are offering in the FX markets uh, which really is one of the more evolved asset classes out there, right? So at Market Alpha, we're a uh, market structure and fintech advisory firm that specializes in providing services and advisory to uh, in a wide range of asset classes. We're all uh, a bunch of ex-Wall Street guys that have been in the business 25, 30 years, rates, credit, equities, FX, etc. And what's really interesting about this conference, as I said before, is you get to see all the latest and greatest technology and the FX markets have really pushed the envelope and look more like the equity markets do versus some of the other fixed income OTC markets that are out there. So from that perspective, it's, it's a great conference. And uh, it, that actually leads me to my next question, which is, you know, uh, uh, the FX industry and FX trading has, you know, transformed so much over the last, let's say, 20 years. Kind of, uh, can you comment a little bit on that transformation? And I'm sure you were part of it. Yeah. So when I when I started in the business many many years ago, uh, first of all, back then I had a lot more hair than I do now, <laughs> and so uh, the, the business. I, I, I sort of grew up in the rates business, uh, derivatives, treasuries, agencies, mortgages. Uh, but back then, back in the early 90s, the FX business and the rates business were part of the same. We both reported up, to, both businesses reported up to the same person when I was at the old Chase Manhattan Bank. And the, the protocols, the technologies that were available then were very, very similar. You had both had bifurcated market structure where you had interdealer only pools of liquidity and if you're a customer the only way you could access both the FX and the rates markets was disclosed RFQ initially only over the phone uh, and then and then on electronic platforms that were nothing more than glorified chat rooms right you fast forward to today and there's been a tremendous divergence between where the FX where FX market structure is versus some of the other asset classes and in FX you just have had an explosion of technology uh, data analytics execution choice uh, and you have that all available in the FX markets and not as not to the same degree in, in, in many of the other asset classes so uh, so this is this is always uh, you know a great venue from my perspective because it's kind of like where the future may wind up for treasuries, derivatives, etc. So, yeah, it makes sense. Um, you know, obviously, we were dealing with a pandemic, kind of COVID nineteen, really impacted um, you know some financial institutions in, in terms of how they conduct their FX business, right? Um, can you talk a little bit more about how uh, you think those kind of challenges can be overcome, and if perhaps Market uh, Market Alpha, you know, has solutions that 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 could help. Right. Well, that's that's a very good question. Obviously, I'm. I'm first of all, I'm glad. It, it, it seems at least we're coming to the end of COVID, uh, but it's really it's really uh, had a dramatic impact on businesses, particularly in the trading world. Uh, and it's not just FX. It's a, it's it's any asset class, right? Uh, if you're on a trading floor, one one of the one of the value add Ads of being in a, in a in a dealing room is to have everyone in the same place sharing information in real time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And given that a lot of that had to be uh, 
moved out of the firm, everyone going remote, uh, well, you know, all of all of that had to be uh, the trading operations had to be changed dramatically a lot at a lot of different firms, and it it certainly uh, was not smooth in a lot of cases at certain firms, and um, you know it was very difficult, right? And and you know, in terms of um, you know sharing information in real time, it made things very very difficult. Uh, so you know, at Market Alpha, you know we're we're not a um, a trading operation. We're more an advisory firm, right? So it was very easy for us uh, to shift into you know the virtual world. Um, so uh, now now I think that most of the most of the the big Wall Street firms have people going back into the office and have for months. Uh, but it was certainly very difficult at the be at the beginning stages of the pandemic. Yeah, very much so. So, Michael, uh, we know you're a very busy man at the conference. Uh, you are on speaking on multiple panels. I think one of them is about leveraging trading technology with respect to FX, but I in terms of swaps, NDFs, forwards, uh, those types of contracts. Can you elaborate a little bit further on what your what insights you're going to be covering at that panel? Sure, absolutely. So, that that panel is really going to discuss the various products that are available in foreign exchange, the types of products, and how how the liquidity differs in those products and why. So you have FX spot, you have NDFs, you have swaps and forwards, you have options. And all, all of those products have different have, have different market dynamics, different different uh, different available liquidity, if you will, right? And so one of the themes that we're going to do a deep dive on is how does the market structure affect the liquidity? So typically, if a product is more standardized and there's there's not a, a credit component to it, more participants can can get involved and, and focus the liquidity on on fewer contracts, and that usually uh, that that usually adds to the liquidity of of that particular product, right? And so. So for instance, FX Spot, highly commoditized, unbelievably liquid, anyone can trade with anyone, but then you move into swaps and forwards. And and a lot of those products are highly customized. Someone's trying to hedge to a particular date. Uh, there's a credit component to it. Not everyone can face everyone. And so that detracts somewhat from the number of participants that can trade with each other and and the liquidity, the available liquidity. So those are some of the themes that we're going to do a deep dive on with that particular panel. And I'm looking forward to that. Great. Um, and I think you're also doing another one uh, to do with data sources and market data. Um, I, I won't be able to attend the panel uh, specifically, but from my perspective and some of the things that I've been hearing from uh, companies in the industry, uh, both from a retail perspective and an institutional perspective, is uh, when we speak about data sources like market data vendors, uh, some you know companies like ICE, CBOE, and things like that, um, how do you think retail and institutional brokers can sort of find the alpha in, in the data sources, in the data analysis? Is because to me it seems like pricing and liquidity is one thing and execution is one thing but the data analysis piece is something that's also very very important for brokers today and there seem to be challenges in terms of sort of syncing the two making them work in sync with each other uh, absolutely and and data and analytics are even more important today than it, than than it was 10 20 years ago because with more automation you need higher quality data, better analytics. You know, if you're going to automate your tr your your trading operations, the quality of your data and the analytics are, are incredibly important. Okay, and so this particular panel that uh, I'm going to be moderating is taking quote unquote big data and turning it into smart data. Okay, so big data is a term that's been very much overused, and it can mean a number of different things depending 
know what you're talking about. And so in the FX world, in, 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 a, in a buy side firm's trading operation, there's just a tremendous amount of tick data, trade data, macroeconomic data, and the ability to bring all that together in a meaningful way, whether your trading operation is fully automated, partially automated, or you're just trying to filter this information down to the line trader, all of that is extremely important and, and crucial in terms of generating alpha. Okay, so uh, transforming that data, that raw data, into your workflow and getting it down to the point where you're making a trading decision, either by an algorithm or a human being, that's a critical part of the process. And so that's what we're going to talk about on that panel. I'm, I'm looking forward to that one as well. That sounds interesting too. That sounds interesting too. Well, listen, thanks for taking the time. To, to meet with us and speak with us. Um, we, we, we wish you success uh, here at the show and in 2022, and we hope to see you again soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.